All right, welcome everybody. My name is Doc Severson. I'm going to be going over my 22 watch list here. So thanks again, David Ananka, for putting on this event. I can't believe you guys are going till 11 o'clock tonight. That's amazing. All right, so here we go. Some of you may or may not know me. So first of all, I'm going to cover who I am. I am a poster child for Rogaine. It's just not working yet, but uh, I trade on the side. So I've been an individual trader and performance coach since 2005. I currently run services ReadySet.Trade as well as ReadySetCrypto.com. You may have heard of me before at services like OptionsMD or TheoTrade or Docs Trading Tools or maybe even the original Options Linebacker. And during this time, my specialty is, and everybody needs a specialty, but it's fractal price analysis, which is multiple time frame price analysis, options and future strategies. And through a requirement on my own, I've had to become an expert on trading mindset to try to figure out my own problems. So because of this, I tend to try to simplify the complex. This is really what I do. I've written a couple of books as well, which are available on Amazon. First of all was Hacking the Holy Grail, which is more about understanding the silly decisions that we make with our own limbic brain, why the human mind is really not set up to trade effectively uh, out of the gate, and you have to retrain yourself on how to do that. And this is why there's a big separation between retail traders and institutions is because they've figured that out. And then the whole multiple time frame thing is a system that I sort of cobbled together over the years with multiple time frames, and I've built something that I call fractal energy trading. So again, both of these books are available on Amazon if you want to take a peek, inexpensive and uh, hopefully entertaining for you. So that's who I am. Now, what we're going to do today is to entertain and educate, hopefully. My purpose, though, is we're seeing thousands of new investors experience the financial markets for the first time. We had a lost decade of investors after 2008. Everybody just went away after that. Everybody just got discouraged. And I felt like I was in a bubble on my own there for a while. And then I saw newer investors getting back into crypto. And really, since Wall Street bets became very popular a couple of years ago, we've seen a great new influx of investors into there. So it's not really a great time to do this right now because 2022 is going to be a very volatile year in terms of extraordinary uncertainty and volatility. For an experienced trader, that's opportunity, and we're salivating for that. However, for a new trader, it's going to be tough. So I want to see today's small investor get started without being taken advantage of. I want to see the little guy win. And I think this might be a very difficult year to pick stocks. We'll see. So what I'm going to share with you today is what I've learned after doing this every day for the last 16 years. My approach is not for everybody, but it might just resonate with you. So give it a listen, have an open mind, and we'll see if we can uh, meet at the end and believe the same thing. So first of all, what do we want? What are we here for? What, what are the majority of retail investors after? Well, we're all after uptrending assets. The majority of us are after assets that gain in value over time the sooner the better, right? But the challenge here is that it's tough to find those great performing assets, at least for most people it is. So it's kind of the same old story because we find something moving and it's kind of like a car being chased by a dog, right? We, we get in too late. And as soon as we get in and we all joke with each other about it, well, as soon as I buy in, it goes down, right? We find this great stock, and as soon as we buy in, down it goes. I mean, you see this everywhere. If you just search around at the Internet, why is it that the shares go down as soon as I buy in? Everybody gets the same problem, right? So welcome back to work at Wendy's, Mr. Diamond Hands, or buy a stock. If it goes up, sell it. If it goes down, don't buy it, which is the old uh, Yogi Berra version of this. So it's kind of the same old story. Everybody goes through this sort of, you know, filter of this. And it's a matter of whether you can get past this point. It's a progression that everybody seems to go through. Now, why does this happen? I have my own thoughts to this. I think a lot of it is our own programming. A lot of us have been programmed since birth with media in terms of saying, hey, like the E-Trade baby, this stuff is fun. It's simple. Any Even a baby could do it. Or the Motley Fool saying, you know, we're idiots. If we can do this, anybody can do this. 
or the Wall Street bets guys, you know, we'll all just work together at something and we'll all make money. But it goes even further back than that with guys like Chuck Schwab and E.F. Hutton. When E.F. Hutton talks, everybody listens, right? The problem is, is that we all end up like a bunch of lemmings running over the cliff. We all end up doing exactly the same thing. And that's because of this inherent programming that all of us have received, whether or not we realize it, we all sort of think the same. And being an options mentor for the past 16 years, it's almost like everybody comes off an assembly line when they start working with me. It's like, okay, where'd you learn that? Okay, you've all learned the same exact thing. You all have the same exact problem. And even though everybody's different, everybody comes to trading with the same baggage. So this is why we all do this. And so it's a really difficult task to find this needle in the haystack, to find this one stock, this perfect stock that nobody else knows about. And not only find it, but also nail the entry point, hit it right in the bullseye. This is a really difficult thing to do. And this is why so few people are good at it. So the odds are really not in your favor either. Do you realize that the outcome of your trade, if you want to buy low and sell high, is only got a 33% probability of trending from your entry point higher? And, you know, you have to understand that if it goes sideways during that point, that's opportunity cost, just wasting your capital, just sitting there doing nothing while it's doing that. And obviously, we don't want to be holding while it's going down because you could be doing something different with that capital. So not only is it a hard task, but also the probabilities are going against you as well, too. Okay, so I'm not here to tell you how hard this is. I'm here to tell you there's a fix for this. I just want to show you why you've had difficulties following the same perilous path as everyone else down this yellow brick road. So if you have an open mind, I have an alternative to propose for you. So assuming that's what we all want. Now, I don't want to bore you here, but I want to give you some context with my story. And not to say that I did it right or anything. I'm just showing one possible way. And you're welcome to do exactly the same thing that I did. So I started trading back in 96 and I was working in an office with a bunch of other guys in a high tech company. And we all knew the high tech really landscape out there. We all knew what companies were doing well. So it was pretty easy to stay on top of the companies that were doing well, and just jump on board and take them for a ride. Probably could have done better than this, but I was able to buy a couple of cars for cash. And, you know, that was nice not to have a payment for a while. So I had zero skill with this. All I knew was the math that if I spent, <laughs> the commissions were 30 bucks in and 30 bucks out. So I had to clear at least a $60 profit just to break even. You imagine that? You imagine trading with that today? No. Okay, so things are better today. But the problem was is that I ran into this little thing called a true bear market. Do you guys realize we have not really seen a true bear market since 2009? Not really. All of them have been very sharp corrections since that point. But once upon a time, back in the lands of yore, we used to have these bear markets and they would last for anywhere from 18 months to three years, like this one did. So I realized pretty soon that I didn't know what the hell I was doing when the market started going down. Right. So I said, uh, hey, Morgan Stanley, why don't you help me out? Why don't you take my my retirement account over? And they did a great job with that. They lost 70 percent of the value. So I figured, well, this is no good. So right around 2004 is when I get introduced to options. And I had thought of them as just some niche instrument before that, that only, you know, nerds and geeks knew about. But that kind of defined me. So it was about time for me to learn it. So I committed fully into it. I spent a ridiculous amount of money in retrospect to learn it, but it was not so much the education that I learned as the people that I met along the way, which was really important. So I don't begrudge that money for it, but it was, <laughs> you could buy small house for that these days. So I committed fully to learning options. I learned how to make money, whether, whether the market was going up, down, or sideways. Great. Okay. But there's a problem. So I wasn't making any money. I was putting on a tremendous amount of trades. I was 
a ferocious student, I would jump on my bike and ride hundreds of miles just to go meet with a discussion group that supposedly knew something. I was, this is all I wanted to do. So for that first year, all I did was read books. I just built a bookshelf. I learned everything there was about options. I read every book that I could get my hands on, you know, bought every course, did everything like that. I learned an awful lot, but the problem was, and maybe some of you can relate to this, is that you end up knowing a lot. You can amaze friends and relatives at parties with how much you know, but I wasn't making any money. So my account was slowly churning lower. So I earned it. I learned that anyone can enter a trade, but professionals focus on the risk and exits. I wasn't there yet. There was something missing that I did not know yet. And what I did was probably the best thing I did was to stop. I did a big old reset. I literally swept my desk off. I just, whoosh, okay, clean desk, clean sheet of paper. I closed all of my trades. I committed to trading one underlying chart with one strategy. Realized I was not going to get there. I was not going to master this if I was still a jack of all trades and master of none. So hit the big old reset button. And this may be something that you may want to consider. If your results are all over the place, you can't get any consistency. You may want to consider hitting the big old red button. Okay, so what was the fix? What did I do? So once I sat down and figured out Let's stop doing this. Let's stop the madness. I had to choose two things. And this was not somebody else telling me this. This is me. I was like, just in, intuitively, I knew, let's start with the simplest thing that I possibly can and then build on that. So what I was going to do was just choose a chart and a strategy. One chart, one strategy. That's it. So I looked around for the biggest, most widely followed stock and the most liquid option chain. No contest, it was the S&P 500. It was, and it still is, one of the best charts for technical analysis, and it's the king for liquidity. Next, I had to choose a strategy. I wanted a limited risk income strategy that would fit a choppy market. We had a really choppy market back then, 2004, 2005, 2006, just chop, chop, chop all the time. It was kind of an amazing market just because there was so much competition for the investing dollar. There were decent bond yields. The housing market was going crazy. So it wasn't only right now, up until recently, the stock market was the only game in town. And this is why we've had this ballistic market for the last 15 years or so, especially after Bernanke started the QE experiment back in 2010. So it's been a one, you know, one trick pony since that point. But back then it was very choppy. So iron condors ruled. So here's the process. What I did was I ran dozens of trades, learning from each cycle. This is important here, guys. It took a surprisingly short period of time to reach my performance goals. Once you start to focus on one thing, one chart, one strategy, do it over and over and over again. And think about this. Think about you know going through this cycle, identifying your goals, coming up with some rules, get some results. Analyze the results, make a correction before you do it. Again, go back to your goals. Are they still? So what you're doing is basically running this thing on a clockwise basis up and up. And every cycle, you're getting a little bit better at this. Every cycle. This is why guys like, you know, Tiger Woods or Ernie Els or Jason Day or somebody like that is going to be out at the range. Just whack, 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 just hitting balls. They're going through the same thing. They're going through this development cycle. Anything that's iterative goes through this type of cycle. This is how you get better at human performance. So I had one stock to follow and a profitable system beginning to a trading system. The focus allowed me to get good at one thing in a short period of time. Imagine what it feels like to gain that confidence. It was great. So after about a year of this, I quit my job, went solo. Might have been a little too aggressive, might have done it a little too quickly, but I'm glad that I did. Sometimes you have to burn your bridges to get where you want to go. So that's my story. That was back in 2006 that I burned the bridge, went solo, and I've not looked back since that point. The biggest difference that I did was I broke 
the cycle of saying, hey, I want to look for that needle in the haystack. I want to find that the stocks that everybody else is looking for. I went down to one stock, one strategy. Okay, are you intrigued yet? All right, so what do we do to create a one stock system? There's a number of advantages to going to a one stock system, particularly one using the S&P 500. So are we doing only the S&P 500? So this is an example of my, this is my trading log that we, we set up publicly at Ready, Set, Trade. And if you look through here, there's some of these are, some of these are other stocks, like I've got a McDonald's on here and I've got um, a GLD trade and I've got a Home Depot trade, NVIDIA, Expedia and BIBs, things like that. But I would say a full 80% of these are the S&P 500. And this is our bread and butter. These trades are harder to qualify, so at least 80% of the trading activity is the S&P 500. So again, the benefits of this, of index trading, no earnings, no corporate announcement risk. This was Netflix the other day. Oops. <laughs> you know, like, oh, oh, we had a little gap on earnings. That is what's going to happen when you trade individual stocks. The S&P has got generally excellent liquidity of underlying and the options as well, too. So depending on what you're trading, you could trade the SPY stock, great liquidity there. You could trade the options too, or the SPX, whatever you want. It's also got diverse strike price granularity. You can kind of dial in your trade really well. With the S&P, you've got weekly options expirations at least three times a week. It's also a great technical chart. I keep coming back to this. To me, the S&P is by far the best technical chart that's out there. That means that there's literally millions of people watching it, making decisions on it on a day-to-day -day basis, whether or not they're retail or institutional. And it tends to create a self-fulfilling prophecy of support and resistance at important levels. Okay, so those are some of the benefits. Now, the risk of one stock, if you're only using one stock, you can get run over by the freight train if you're positioned in only one direction. So you do open yourself up to systemic risk, but you can deal with this, right? So you can go through strategy diversity. We use a blended approach to creating income. We do some of these, which are non-directional. We do some of these that are non-directional equity, which is more of a semi-directional trade. We do directional trades. Of course, we can do futures. We can go bi-directional there. So there's ways that we can break things up in terms of how we do strategy diversification. We can also use different instruments. The S&P's got the SPX, which is options only. The Spiders ETF, which is one-tenth notional size versus the SPX. We can use the ES futures, the MES futures. We have ES and MES futures options, or we can use different ETFs. There's dozens of different ETFs that represent the SSO or the S&P 500. So we can select the appropriate instrument depending on the characteristics and risk management that we want from the trade. So we've got a lot of options, alternatives, whatever you want to call it. We can also diversify by strategy. Once you get a little bit more conversant with options, you can learn about the Greeks and about the, the dynamic risks that Delta or Vega, or in this case, Theta, so delta, volatility, and time, how those change. And so we can keep things more delta neutral or at least within a window of risk for us. We can also do the same thing with volatility to protect against big spikes in volatility or perhaps even volatility crush if it starts to drop. And sometimes the passage of time can be a benefit or a detriment to the position, depending on whether you're long or short gamma, so we can add a, a balance of long and short theta to a portfolio. So again, there's no magic bullets to perfectly handle a crash unless you're nearly 100% short prior to it, I'm not representing that at all, but you can have a much better sense. You can use these almost to have a better instrument panel on your portfolio in terms of the changes in altitude, say for, for a pilot. Okay, you can also diversify by time frame. So when we have slow markets, I like to do slow strategies because 
It's easy, right? So some of these we hold for 60 days because we can, because nothing happens. We get into markets such as last summer, nothing going on. When we pulled back, it was 3%. That's it. So we can hold these really slow, dull, boring positions and create income from them during quiet and trending markets when they're just sort of lazily going higher, right? But when markets start to pitch around like this, a lot of people don't have the stomach for that. So other strategies we can say, let's be flat by the end of the day. We can do day strategies only and are never held overnight. Or we can tilt our mix towards that type of position where we're just playing intraday volatility if we want. Again, it's your call. It depends on what you want to build. So some benefits to a one stock portfolio. Simplicity, ease of operations, no more hunting for the needle in the haystack, no more trying to follow what everybody else is doing, right? You're just trading your thing. No more wasting time on fundamental research. We don't have to do you know, earnings growth and we don't have to look at dividend yields and things like this. There's no due diligence necessary to trade the S&P. You get more reps per strategy, which is important for improvement and optimization purposes. You're never that dog chasing after a car mode like some of the other retail investors chasing after the hot stock. When you focus on one asset, you, turn to, you tend to le learn its movements and you're in a position to better anticipate and react to movement. You're more in tune with what it's doing. It's kind of like you can be in a crowded room and if your child is on the other side of the room, your eye will very quickly pick them out simply because of your reticular activating system is tuned in to the movements, how your child holds himself, how they walk, how tall they are, everything like that. You can pick them out in the crowd. You can do the same thing with your chart. So how many times have you quit watching a stock that you used to follow closely? So a stock is like, it blows up and then it goes sideways like this. And about right here, you just give up on it. You say, this thing is never going to break out. And then boom, off it goes. So this is typically what happens if you've got a big watch list where you're watching, you know, 30, 40, could be even more than that stocks. You're going to give up on certain things. You're going to take your eye off the ball. You're going to chase what's moving. And then all of a sudden it breaks out and you're like, damn it, wait, come back here. You weren't supposed to do that. And so we end up getting a lousy entry yet again. This is how the system perpetuates. Now, there is a downside to a one-stock strategy. And you're you're going to miss out on those spectacular moonshots that retail traders love to chase. And, you know, it's fun, and it's, it's great to get on board one of these things, but at what cost? So my own opinion, if you're consistent with your own results, then you're going to be in a state of mind where you just don't care about this stuff. That's kind of how I am. Don't really care about this stuff. I see Wall Street bets, and I'm like, what are you guys doing over there? You know, I'm just... I'm in my sandbox and I'm just chilling. I'm having a good time. So those are the downsides. Those are the upsides. This is how we create a one stock system. Okay, so our goal, I like to have a goal for something and it's to earn a consistent amount of income every day. So I want to, I want to know at the end of the day whether I've won or lost. And so I want to just keep turning the wheel. I want to keep turning these gears and get the process going. So you might say a hundred bucks a day. That doesn't sound like much. I get accused of that all the time. I was with so-and-so service and they made $5,000 yesterday. Great. <laughs> Are they going to tell you if they lose something, right? So I'm just, I'm just all about incremental improvement. Do you realize that if you start off at the beginning of a year over here, and if you say, all right, every day I'm going to dedicate to getting 1% better every day, 1% better every day. If I asked you if you could do that, could you get better at your strategy, at your trading between now and tomorrow? 1% better by tomorrow. I think everybody that's listening right now would say, well, hell yeah, I could do that. No problem. Okay, challenge. Now do it the next day and the next day. And the next day, get 1% better at this every day. Do you realize that at the end of a year, you'd be almost 38 times better at something? 38 times better 
at something. Imagine that. So start with humble beginnings and just don't quit. You've got to start somewhere. I don't care if it's $10 a day, start somewhere, start getting some consistency. Tiny gains will add up. You're going to hear the same thing from me again and again. Just keep going through the cycle. Don't give up. Keep getting better and better at something. What most people do is they learn about a strategy. They'll take a couple of trades. If they don't immediately win, then there's this bright, shiny penny over there. Somebody else is selling another system that guarantees ultimate profits without any risk. And so they go thundering over there, buy this program, trade it a couple of times, don't earn any money from it because they haven't bothered to, to learn it. And so here's another bright, shiny penny over here with somebody advertising a program that says, hey, this is so easy. I wake up every day, I spend two minutes and I make thousands of dollars. So they go thundering over here, they buy this program and they go through the same cycle. And eventually what I see is people coming back to the beginning. So really guys, it's not that hard. This is not that difficult. It's just a matter of you putting in the work into this, just get 1% better every day. It's a really simple business, right? So think about ways that you can simplify what you're doing today and every day. So again, we use the income pyramid for this. We use different strategies for different purpose. We use a blended approach to creating income. Now your approach is gonna be different. It's gonna be different from the person next to you. It's gonna be different from me. Everybody's got a different combination of capital, knowledge, and time. What I would say is the most important thing here is by far knowledge, because everybody is capital constrained. And I've seen people with nearly unlimited capital. I've seen people with eight-figure accounts completely churn through it in no time at all. Like, it just breaks my heart to watch people, you know, like, you know, hey, hey, Doc, I just lost a lot of money, so I need some help. Like, <laughs> why? Why? You know, so people confuse capital with knowledge. Having more capital does not mean you have more knowledge. What you're finding is you want this intersection in the Venn diagram here, depending on how much time you want to spend or, you know, with this, some people are willing to spend a lot of time at this. Some people are not willing to spend a lot of time. So find this intersection that works for you. But if there's anything that I could recommend to you is like never stop adding knowledge. Knowledge will always stick with you and is leverageable. You can always leverage the knowledge that you have. Okay, so what we're gonna focus on today is building a one stock strategy. So we're gonna walk through some strategies that we can use to build a one stock, st one stock strategy with this. Okay, so first of all, we're gonna start with neutral trades. This is down at the bottom of the income pyramid. These are non-directional trades based on an index, such as the S&P 500. And it's an income trade. So what we want to do is to start with income. And so what we're going to start with is the iron condor. We can use the iron condor for these neutral income trades. Now there's different types of irons. And I'm just going to go through this quickly. There's because this is, you need to find out which type is best for you. There's high probability irons, there's low probability irons. And you might wonder, like, why would I do a low probability iron? Well, the answer here is it's much faster. What you'll find is that the more you narrow in the width of your trade, the faster that you will be able to realize profits as long as it stays within that area. So we'll get into this one in a second. There's also, you hear people from, say, like Tastyworks or whatever, talking about a one expected move, iron condor. We'll talk about those. And then there's the iron butterfly, which is the most narrow one. I have a very niche purpose for that one. Okay, so the high probability irons are ones that you hear about from a lot of people. This is where most retail traders start because we're talking about a the probability of each side on here and I've got a lot of alerts going off here, so excuse that, but markets are moving around today. So we'll start out with, you know, a 5% probability, or say, 
let's take the inverse of that and say each side here is a 95% chance of winning for this. So maybe overall you have a 90% chance of winning the trade or somewhere in the 80s, right? And so what you find is that <laughs> when you have a trade like this, you're equally miserable with any kind of price movement to the upside or to the downside, but as long as the price stays within this area, to some degree, uh, you're good. So the thing that most retail traders are looking at is they like this high probability. High probability to them means safety, means surety. And what I've learned is like, uh, you know, that's, that's great because you can win nine times out of 10, but that's that 10th time, all of a sudden you're looking at this risk here. And that's pretty hefty. So unless you're actively managing it, these can hurt really, really badly if you mismanage them. So what I find is a lot of more experienced traders will move towards things like low probability iron condors, where it's a one-to-one -one reward to risk. So it's much tighter. But again, the big advantage to these is that they're very quick. So if you can get the price to stay within this range, just for a few days, you'll find it'll pay just as much as spending a whole month into a high probability condor is. So time can be a risk, you know, time is a risk. Okay, so that's the low probability iron condor. And I'll take questions at the end of this, of course. There's also the expected move iron condor. So these are ones where the the delta is, I mean, it, technically it's supposed to be 0 0.16, 0 0.16. So there's a one standard deviation width in the iron condor. So it's a 68.2% probability of success. So the, the fat part of the, the bell curve there. So again, this one's just a hybrid between the, the low probability and the high probability. It's a little bit wider than the low prob. And then we get into the iron butterfly. So what we've done is we've collapsed the iron condor. So the short strikes are at the same strike price. Now, why would you do something like this? Speed. This is what we're doing with the zero DTE trades. So we do some trades and I'll, I'll get into this in a minute where we're only in them for maybe some as little as five minutes. Sometimes it takes an hour, but generally it's less than that. We're in there as little as possible. So what we're doing is we're looking for a range bound market during the day and attacking it with one of these. And these are very, very quick in terms of burning off that time value for the zero days to expiration trades. So it's a version of iron condor, but it's called the iron butterfly. So which one of these is best? Well, there is no best. There's just one that's going to work for you. So I know lots of retail traders love the high probability condor. And then on the spectrum, my preference with a swing trade or something I'm going to hold for a few days is going to be more on the low probability condor. So I've I started off, and this is what I was doing exclusively when I, when I quit my job and went out to live, you know, to work in the markets for a living, is it was high probability condors. And just due to the risk of them, I've migrated more towards these, much more comfortable with this type of trade now. And we use the iron butterflies almost exclusively intraday now, although you could use these on a big, great big uh, Swing trade as well, too. Okay, exits and management. Anyone can enter an iron condor. The skill comes in knowing when to enter, how to defend, and then when and how to exit. You can't just play them by the probabilities. So avoiding big trends is the key, if you can do that. So those are iron condors. Let's go into short calendars. Briefly here, just going to give you a sort of an outline of what a calendar is. A calendar looks like this. So this is the expiration graph to this. And this is the T plus zero line. This is today's. And what happens is this will eventually rise up and form fit into that area. Okay, so this is what will happen. 
Now, the whole idea here is that just like an iron condor, you want this to be able to kind of stay in one area. Just don't move, right? So it is, again, is a short gamma trade. We want the price to stay in the same spot. So what's the edge here? Well, the cool thing about this is that we've sold that front option. So we have the front option, which is whenever that expiration date, and then T2 is the expiration date of the back option. And this will decay like crazy as this one gets close to its expiration, but the back option will remain, or I, I should say retain most of its value. This is a fundamental edge, will never disappear. Right. Sometimes you wonder, like when you start learning about a strategy, it's like, okay, this works for today, but will it work next year? Yeah. The calendar spread will never lose this ability to have that front option decay much faster than the back option. It's a huge edge, but you've got to identify the right type of price movement. What are the risks for this? The big risk are big trends and shrinkage. So big trend is going to put the price and then all of a sudden you're, you're down the risk curve down here. So you've got to manage this thing very actively. Shrinkage is also a problem that most of you are not used to. Shrinkage means that the expiration graph, everything starts to drop like this. Imagine if this graph with this potential profit here, all of a sudden turned into this graph here, like this, much smaller here, not very much space for the price to move within. And I've drawn this poorly, but you get the idea. Shrinkage means that the expiration graph will actually drop. And this is unique to time spreads versus vertical spreads. So we have to adjust for trends. We can actually do this kind of, kind of nicely with a trade like this, because we can actually take a single calendar and turn it into a double calendar. Now there's only so far you can do this before it starts to become very cumbersome and eat up a lot of capital, but it can be done. You can leapfrog these things, build a, turn a single into a double. Exits and management I found can be, it's an accounting task more than anything else. So I've got a very specific spreadsheet, which allows me to understand exactly how to take profits, when to manage it, when to adjust it, how to do that. So use the tools when you can. So condors versus calendars, which one's better for income? I would say iron condors are easier. If you learn to trade calendars, it will make you a better trader because you have to think in one more dimension because you do have more variables changing on you. So it's a much more rigid qualification. More variables to pre-qualify and get right before the trade. Less distance for price movement before action required. More initial capital, but much faster profits. So there are some advantages and disadvantages between the two. Okay, so those are neutral trades. Now we're gonna get into semi-neutral trades. Some of you have heard about these strategies before, like cash secure puts. So notice that I'm using less capital with these. The foundation down here, the non-directional index trades with iron condors or calendar spreads are using more capital, using less capital here. The further up the pyramid I go, the less risk that I want to take, the more directional risk that we have. You perhaps have heard of cash secured puts. This is where I'm selling a put option down here. So we sell that put option down there. We're having an obligation. I will buy this stock. In this case, this is the ProShares S&P 500 SSO. Say I will buy the SSO if it comes down here by this date, by this date here, which is the expiration date. So if it's there or below by expiration, I commit to buy that. So basically I'm being paid to buy at the pullback. I'm getting paid for that pullback. So this helps drop my cost basis. So not only is this a discount to begin with, so obviously what you want to do is you want to sell these on pullbacks if you can help it, because you're going to, going to create a much better situation for yourself, much better assignment price. And then the converse of that is the covered call. The covered call is basically if you own an apartment building, and somebody comes up to you and says, hey, how many tenants do you have? I'm like, what? 
What are you talking about? I own an apartment building. Yeah, but don't you rent it out? No. Why would it? It's the same thing, right? If you own stock, you should rent it out. Why not? It's kind of like the services where, you know, what is it, uh, Turo or something like that, where you can rent your car out to other people? No, great idea. So you can take your assets and make money with them and earn extra income. So if you do get assigned on a uh, cash secured put, this is why they call it the wheel strategy, the wheel of fortune. You get, you take your cash secured put and you sell them, sell them, sell them, sell them as, you know, as many times as you can. And you drive your cost basis down. And then eventually you get assigned. And then what you do is you sell these calls as often as you can. And eventually you're going to get called out because the price is going to be above that strike. That's okay. Goodbye. Next time. All right. Keep doing it for the next stock. So those are the semi neutral trades. They're not totally neutral. They do have some directionality to them, but it's still an income trade. So I can do this also with the S and P's. I can, what's great is the SSO just split. So it's a very cost-effective way to trade the S and P 500. You can also do some directional trades. So further up the stack on the same chart, I'm not looking at any other charts. I'm just looking at the S and P. Now I can look for and scan for directional trades as well. So I can use things like directional spreads. What's nice about these, a lot of people just use straight call options when they first learn to trade directionally with options. Everybody does that because it's the simplest way, but it's also the very hardest way to make money with options is to do straight calls and puts. So we use a vertical debit spread and it's very simple to manage, very easy to manage trade. And we can get a nice cost effect of one to one. And all we need is just some standard volatility. And we can get this thing up into a profitable zone, take profits, and there you go. And it's risk managed, right? We know exactly what we're going to potentially lose before we even open the trade. Not so with a stock, right? Stocks have unlimited downside. We can also use things like uh, at Ready to Trade, we use the RSI Laguerre signal, which is this magic indicator down here. This is a different version of the relative strength index, and it's based on a Laguerre time transform, which is much more responsive. So it gives us this terrific oscillator for identifying turns in the market very quickly. We also use a fractal arrangement here where we have an anchor chart. We're trading in the direction of the anchor chart swing, whichever way that is. And then we're looking for specific signals coming from the RSI study on the hourly chart. So this is the signal chart here. So we have anchor and signal chart. This is daily. This is hourly. And then these actually come through alerts into our email or we can send them through text message, which is awesome. And this is our scanner that we use to do this. So we can have all kinds of this. Again, it's the same chart. I'm not looking at any other chart. All of these signals, all of these trades are coming through one chart and maybe one or two different option chains. It's that simple. And then finally, we get into what's been really hot lately, which is zero DTE or zero days to expiration. These are options that expire today. So our normal weekly options, you can see here with Microsoft, this is a Friday, here's the following Friday, here's the following Friday. They're all these Friday expirations, which is great. I mean, this is a nice thing that was started back in 2005. And most of the bigger options. Most of the bigger stocks that have options have weekly options like this, but the S&P 500, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. There's even a Thursday one in here. Three expirations per week. I'd be surprised if this doesn't go to five times a week pretty soon. We may even have hourly options within a few years. Okay, we can also do this with the spiders. The spiders have Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Same thing. Even the Qs has this too. One-tenth the notional value. 
So time decay, these options expire today. So we're gonna be looking for one of these trades tomorrow morning, Wednesday. We're using a Wednesday expiry for the option. It expires that day. These are very, very quick trades if we can properly qualify them. That's what we do. Now, these are very sharp instruments. So for those of you that know anything about baseball, there are these things called batting cages that are at some of these, so like, you know, all-in-one sports parks where you can, you know, maybe it's got a driving range, they have some batting cages, they have some pinball machines, whatever. But the batting cages are usually organized by pitching speed. So you might have a batting cage, which is, you know, 40 miles an hour. So here comes the pitch at you 40 miles an hour. Okay, you've got one that's coming at you maybe 60 miles an hour or intermediate. And usually they top out at something like maybe 80 miles an hour or something like that. So you got, you got a ball whizzing by your head pretty quickly here at 80 miles an hour. What I don't want you doing is starting out here. I think what you should do is you should get good here, work your way up to 60, work your way into Prove it to yourself that you can handle the 40 and 60 before you step into the 80 mile an hour cage, which is the zero DTE options. They're the fastest things that are out there. Okay, so that's zero DTE. Now there's even one more, and that's futures. So some of you perhaps have traded futures before. This is the top of the pyramid for a reason. These are the very highest reward to risk activity that we can do. These are best traded during certain times, right? So I don't trade them every day and every moment. You know, I've done that before and it just, it's, it's not good, right? You have to be very selective with this. So futures are the ideal directional instrument. And I would suggest considering the MES or the micro E-mini each one of these, the price, you'll see the price go up and you'll see the price go down. This is called a ladder interface. You got to trade with the ladder interface. Each of these ticks means if you buy or go long or go short a contract, let's say, for instance, we're going to go long a contract. Each one of these is worth a buck 25 to you. So if it goes up four, you're now up five dollars. So if it goes up four ticks, you're up $5. If it goes up four more ticks, you're up $10, right? So it's all very linear. It's nice and linear. Options are not like this. If you went to go long call options or long put options, they don't operate in as linear manner as this. There's a, an element of variability to them because of all the Greeks. So these are micro e-mini futures contracts. So it's the ideal directional instrument. So we use, or I should say, I use a fractal arrangement to trade these. This is you know, what I call the, uh, the 25X chart, the 5X chart. So these are multiples of five times. And then 1X, this is the signal chart that I'm trading off of. This is, we have multiple anchor charts for this. And it's beyond the scope of today's chat for me to go into what I'm doing here with this. But basically what I'm doing is I want to trade in the direction of the anchor chart. I'm using this chart, this intermediate 5X chart, to understand whether or not there's enough energy, is there enough gas in the tank for me to take another trade in that direction? And then the signal chart is only there for taking signal entries based on whatever study I'm using or price action. So I'm also using tick charts for this, which is um, a little bit more niche. Most people are using time charts like one minute or five minute. So these, each one of these candles represents so many transactions, like 200 ticks means there have been 200 transactions in the micro e-minis. Okay, so that's just kind of a setup that we use. Some thoughts on here. By far, it's the most demanding form of trading based on skill and experience. It can be very frustrating if you can't control your own impulses to chase a market move, but nothing is more profitable or effective 
to take advantage of an intraday trend. Futures are great for that. Also, huge advantage to be flat overnight, get some sleep, not worry about if the market's going to crash tomorrow. <laughs> right? Okay, so that's futures trading. So let's put it all together. We've got this whole thing here. We're, we're going to take a little pullback here. We're going to put it all together before I bring it home. And trust me, I'm not going to sell you anything at the end of this. So please stick around to the end. So perhaps a one-stock system will help you achieve more consistency in 2022. Okay? So you can't find the needle in the haystack? Join the rest of us. It's tough. Media of all sorts has been telling you for years the only way you can trade the markets is to find that one magic stock. You and everybody else, right? This is not easy to do. Perhaps a different approach in 22 might work for you. Use options. Learn how to trade options because they give you flexibility to go up, down, sideways, trade different forms of volatility, trade passage of time. The cost is knowledge. If I can do it, so can you. Learn to make some intermediate targets, right? So instead of trying to retire by tomorrow, trying to earn enough money to retire by tomorrow, make yourself financially independent, which is apparently what all these YOLO guys are doing on Wall Street bets. Unbelievable how people at a young age have taken all their capital, put it into one trade. Are you kidding me? Don't try to climb the mountain of financial independence all at once. Learn to make some incremental progress every day towards your goal. Because once you make $100 a day, it's not that far for you to realize $1,000 a day. And then that's when things start to really open up for you. Let the compounding work. Consider a one-stock system. No more hunting around for that needle in the haystack. Consider trading the whole haystack instead of just, you know, looking for that needle. Diversify through strategy. Match the strategy to the edge of the market that it's giving you. You might be able to employ several at once, which is what we do. And then, of course, trade small to begin. Start with something like the Spiders or the Micro E-Mini before you get up to the big dogs like the SPX and the ES. Right? Repetition is the mother of skill. Just get some repetition. Okay, folks, let me summarize here. So where do you go from here? It's my belief that everyone needs to shift to an income-based, one ticker focus. I really think this would help a lot of people. Ditch the old financial income paradigms that no longer work. So you might be wondering how you can get started in doing this. Well, you've come to the right place. Consider joining our community. We're a community of traders who seek high probability, low risk trades. We're trying to make a hundred bucks a day is something very modest. We provide the structure and guidance to show how to quickly get there. Goals are for people who care about winning once. Systems are for people who care about winning repeatedly. This is what we focus on. So here's an example of some of the stuff that we have between the signals that we put out, between the online you know, live trading room that I do. We have a five week daily five times a week daily newsletter. We have a live online community, live trade notifications, multiple trading courses on strategies and techniques, all of which I've written myself. Strategy briefs, research notes, there's a whole ton of stuff that's on our site, but you don't have to start there. I'm not trying to sell you into a course or anything like that. What I want you to do is to join us for free. So if you go out to elite.readyset.trade, you can join for, and actually you can jump right on the site right now. If you go out to, to there, you can just jump right on the site and you don't even have to sign up to, to start seeing some of the things that we have out there. Now, signing up for free will get you a lot of things such as some of the 10X Tribe courses. So some of these courses are out there. You can start to take these courses today. So how do you get started trading? How do you get started trading options? Right? How do you do the wheel strategy? That's a free course you can take starting today. So all of this is out there. You can start interacting with people. You can get on the chat room. All of this out there today, right? So use it for what you want, and it's free. We're never going to spam you. We're not going to do anything like that. We're not going to sell your name to anybody. There's no annoying upsells. It's very chill, right? We just want to help people. That's my only 
goal in life is to make things easier for the next retail trader coming on board. Just to, uh, just to, to give you an idea of what we do in the room, here's our, our performance. This is a recent performance number. So we're winning about 83% of our trades, which is reasonable. That's okay. But this is actually what I'm happiest about is the profit factor. Profit factor means wins divided by losses. That means that for every dollar we lose, we're making almost three bucks. Okay, that's pretty good system, right? So if you're willing to lose a dollar, you might be able to win three. So keep on doing something like that. That's asymmetric return, which is not bad. So we know what we're doing. We're just trying to run a uh, free service out there to get you guys on board uh, to, to give you a place to go, right? So not everybody has a place to go other than Wall Street Bet. So go today to elite.readyset.trade. And David has just put the, uh, the link into there. And uh, you guys are good to go. So let me know if you have any questions I have about... Uh, Two minutes left to go here before I have to turn it over to David. So I will be hanging out here, waiting for your question. Or you can jump on the platform and ask me questions as well, too. You can sign up today for free. It takes literally two minutes, and you're welcome to ask me any questions that you want. How long will it be free? Well, the, the areas that are free today will be free for a long time. So it's not going to just get away. And then all of a sudden, we're going to yank the rug out from underneath you. Like this class, like get started trading options, that's going to be free forever. How to get started trading, that'll be free forever. The 10 steps to 10x, how to become 10 times more effective than you are right now, that will be free forever. The wheel trade will be free forever. So you can get started, use it to whatever you want to. If you choose to, to level up and join us in the elite area, that's your choice, but I'm never going to pound you on it. I'm never going to spam you guys or, or do anything like that. I can't stand that. Uh, how much capital is usually needed? That depends on your strategy. So if you're doing something like selling cash secure puts, you are going to need more capital for something like that. Iron condors uh, can be very cash effective. I would say it's really difficult to get started unless you've got at least a couple of grand. And even then you're gonna be trading very small positions just to get to know how to risk manage these trades. So it's about getting started, right? Do I go over brokerage accounts and charting services that are recommended? Well, we generally use three uh, platforms in the room, Thinkorswim, Tastyworks, and E-Trade. Those are the three live accounts that I, I trade. I show trades on all of those in the live room. So that's what we use for that. Um, let's see. What are your major types of zero DTE trades? I'll tell you what, last year I was doing calendars and I was doing more of the low probability. This year, what I'm doing is just exclusively iron butterflies. Iron butterflies. And I can show you uh, just, and I'll just do this real quick just uh, because I know I'm just about out of time. But this is our trade log right now so far this year. This is Iron Butterfly's 100% win rate. Last year, our tracking for Thinkorswim, 100% win rate. Last year for tracking E-Trade was 95% win rate, profit factor 5.77. So we're pretty good with Iron Butterfly, as I would say, and I'm gonna stick with those but we're very specific and very picky about what we will take. Okay, guys, I am out of time. Thank you very much, David and Anka. Thank you guys for your questions. I hope you just, hope to see you over at elite.readyset.trade.